today we will talk about a very rare procedure but if somebody asks you for this you should be ready to do it and that is sampling the level of aldosterone by hooking the adrenal veins and then checking whether the aldosterone is high on which side so typically these are patients who have hypertension which is not controlled with multiple drugs and invariably when they do a blood study they will find high aldosterone with low renin so remember if you have a patient with a high renin and high aldosterone it is secondary aldosteronism and these patients basically do not have an indication for sampling the uh, from the adrenal veins so if you get such a referral how do you proceed technically in our department most of it is done by my colleague santosh but uh, i will show you what exactly is done and how we plan it so the first and the most important prerequisite is a very good quality ct because adrenal vein especially the one on the right has so much of variability it is next to impossible to hook the right adrenal vein unless and until you know exactly where to search for the second reason why we need the ct is to decide the shape of the catheter that you would ideally use typically in our center adrenal vein sampling does not take more than 30 to 45 minutes because we know exactly where and what to search and how to search so let's have a look at the ct so this is the ct of this uh, lady if you see typically in many of them the adrenal glands will look normal but having said that you can see one adrenal this side on the left and you'll also see the adrenal on the right side and these are normal adrenals there is no adenoma there even if there is an adenoma there is still an indication to sample purely because it can be a non functioning adenoma and you may completely miss the picture if you go and take out the normal side okay now the second step the second step is locating the adrenal vein so it's logical you need a very good quality venous study so you need a multi slice ct which can do a triple phase ct well so you'll have the arterial phase the venous phase and the delayed phase because you do not know in which phase you will see it best but normally you see it in the venous phase which is at a delay of about 20 seconds after the arterial phase now how do you track the vein so i told you right in the beginning that the first vein that you will locate is the left renal because it's technically easy to locate the left renal vein so here is the ivc and this is the left renal vein and the left adrenal vein will come from it so what do you do next take your cursor align it along the adrenal vein correctly we have used a thin nip over here you can see this out so this is it and you will see the adrenal vein arising can you see this going up can you see this okay so you can see the vein going up into the adrenal gland so you know for sure that this is the left adrenal vein so once you see it you know this is approximately uh you can actually even measure it if you want and if this is the beginning of the ivc you know it's approximately about 1.7 5 cm from the edge of the IVC. You know why do you need it? It's not very important, but in case you're planning to use a catheter like a SIM1, you should realize whether the SIM1's upper end will go up. So one of the catheters you can use is a SIM1. Hook it and pull it down so that it curves upwards and hooks into this. So you have contrast in your catheter as you're pulling back or injecting contrast and you will see the adrenal blush as soon as you inject and we will show that on the catheter but uh, my colleague dr santosh does another technique which he finds more comfortable he uses often the sim1 hooks the renal vein 
takes the wire down the ovarian vein. Can you see this? This is the ovarian or the testicular vein, if it's a male. Taking the wire here, he exchanges and uses a burn steam and turns the burn steam up. So that's your choice. But remember, if the SIM1 does not work, the burn steam will always work. Got it? So we got a very good idea, right? We know exactly where the left adrenal vein is coming, your uh, left adrenal vein is coming, you know exactly what catheter to use, you know that uh, uh, you cannot go distal or proximal, you measured it, it's about 1.7 centimeters away. But it is a lot more challenging when it comes to the right side because the right side doesn't have any definite position for it to come. But let's have a look. Invariably, in a good study, you will see the vein. So, first see the adrenal gland. Now, you can see the adrenal gland out here. And as you look, you have to see a vessel which will come and join the adrenal vein. Okay, now, if you see this, you can see this vessel which is actually joining the adrenal vein, right? It is not the diaphragmatic cura. Can you see that? It is separate. You can see the vessel. It is going right into it. So where is the location? This it's at 6 o'clock location. That is bank posterior. Also look at it. This is bank posterior. Now again, you can try with the SIM1. But sometimes the SIM1 can wedge and go deep. Or you can try with a Cobra 1 or the C1 or a C2. So you got the hang of it. You know it's posterior. You know the location, but also you like to know what is the level, right? So for that, put your cursor again. Put it exactly at the point where it joins the renal vein. And once you have it there, just rotate it so that you have a proper sag, so that you will see the spine. Okay, here it is. You know this is the level. Move it so you set the spine. So have a look at it. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and it is more or less at the lower border of the let's have a look at this is exactly where it joins which is at the lower border of the D12 vertebral body now this is extremely important we don't have this landmark in a small 2 mm vein it is impossible for you to actually go and locate it right so that's it so we got all the answers right we know that the, the we know clearly that the left renal uh, the adrenal vein is coming from the left renal at a distance of 1.7 centimeters looking upwards our choice is to use a sim one or you can use the way dr santosh does by exchanging and using a burn stone and taking it up you also know that once you have done this procedure you have to go superiorly and posteriorly at the lower end of L uh, at D12 and hook the vein. Okay, because how do you do a sample? You need three simultaneous samples. So you need both the groins axis or you can take two punctures from the same side. So you'll have one catheter in the left renal vein, one catheter in the right renal vein and if you use a large sheet, you can take a mixed venous sample and then you check all of them to know the difference, which is high because if you don't have a mixed vein, you know, you'll have a high level that is circulating and here you actually find the point where it is higher than what you get in the vein. So what you'll see, one side, you're going to get a sample which will probably match that of the femoral vein and the other one, you'll get a sample which is much higher than the femoral vein. So you need three samples to be sent and using the three of them, you come to a conclusion which adrenal gland is to be removed, okay? So now let's move into the angiography and we will show you the runs that we took so that you can understand this better, right? Okay, take a cut. So, you can see what Dr. Santosh has done. He has taken an injection in the renal vein. Okay, have a look at it. Now, this doesn't uh, help you except in knowing two things. One, where is the take of the adrenal vein? You can see it out here. You can see the flow into the ovarian vein because like I said, he has the technique of uh, wiring the ovarian and exchanging for a Bernstein, you can always try with the SIM1. The SIM1, as you pull back on the SIM1, if you remember, the SIM1 will tend to curve and go up into this. And uh, so that's the uh, uh, a way to do it. You can do either one of these techniques. So once you've seen this, you now see this. He's got this, 
he knows this is the point he has already seen it because it's exactly opposite the ovarian vein this is a lady other is a testicular vein and then you actually inject uh, into it and confirm so what's he doing he's got distill he's got contrast in the syringe he's pulling back and got that that's a technique got it it's a very simple technique see it once again i can zoom it up for you so have a look he's got contrast in a syringe he's going to pull it at uh, there as it dips you take the injection and you confirm the position right so now you got that clear now you leave the catheter there you are not going to do the sample now but now you have to tend to hook the other side this is the angiogram which is actually showing it is in the renal, adrenal vein and uh, now you see he is taking the next catheter and he will try now to hook okay so if you try this is of course a burn stain it will not work you uh, you need a cobra so this is a cobra catheter and you know the position now the position like i said is bank posterior at the lower end of l2 can you see i mean uh, sorry lower end of d12 uh, this is the d12 you can see the rip out here it is somewhere at this point that you should see it okay so let's just go forward so this is not the adrenal vein can you see that how do you know it's not the adrenal vein because you should see a uh, adrenal blush which is not seen so you can get lot of small retroperitoneal veins it might hook this is using a sim one so the reason i'm showing you all these runs is because uh, just to make you understand that it may take time and you should not get worried because the right is not easy okay so this is actually the adrenal vein you can see this going and you can see the a draining vein that is coming back and uh, so the problem that he faced while doing was though he could get it into the adrenal vein the sim one was going so deep that it was not giving us any aspirate at all now that can become a problem too right but we have known clearly where exactly the position this is d12 it is somewhere midpoint of d12 and keeping this landmark you can now change for another catheter so he goes back to his uh, other cobra and keeps trying using a cobra and can you see this is the adrenal vein the same vein but this time he is also getting an aspirate have you got it so now you have got one catheter here which is in the left renal vein and through the left renal vein into the left adrenal vein the other catheter is directly from the ivc bank posterior at the of the right renal vein and then you can do a sheet aspirate and you send all the samples together and you get a diagnosis as which is the site which is abnormal and once you got that diagnosis the surgeon can easily remove the adrenal gland and cure the patient of a very very difficult clinical situation so in other words what do we have to say so now he is ready to take the samples so make sure your catheters are not moved so this is the injection made into the left adrenal vein the right adrenal vein and of course the sheath down which will give us an aspirate which is a common sample which is uh, the systemic uh, levels of uh, aldosterone okay so that's makes the procedure reasonably clear and i'm sure none of you have to refuse a case because you don't know how to do it right so what have we learned today the first thing you learned is somebody request for adrenal vein sampling do not refuse it it's not a difficult procedure the key requisite is that you do a good quality ct so in our center we supervise the ct ourselves we sit at the console we do not compromise on contrast it's good to give about 80 ml of contrast you are absolutely sure that your contrast density will be good you will take a triple face thin slice ct to locate the adrenal veins that is the 
key step without this you cannot do the procedure look at the left renal vein do a multiplanar reconstruction find the point where the vein originates from go to the right side and look where the right adrenal vein comes there are lots of variability so as you go slowly up and down at some point you will get it and you will locate it the choice of your catheter like i said in my department dr satosh uses the sim1 or a cobra to enter the left renal vein then he takes the wire and enters into the ovarian vein or the testicular vein changes for a bernstein and then does the procedure by hooking the bernstein up as you saw but you can also try with the sim1 and on the right side you can again try with a cobra or a sim1 and do a simultaneous sample collection from both the adrenal veins and from the uh, ivc directly the complications are hardly there technically you can produce thrombosis but we never see it and uh, with this remember you will have an extremely good relationship with your endocrinologist and maybe you can then ask him to send you some cases for thyroid ablation or something like that which you so far not been getting from him so thank you so much hope you enjoy this class and before i close i want to show you also santosh's face he is the one who does the procedure seriously and he does the filming and you should thank him because he is the one who's pushing me to do this recordings for you all